Hearing you be excited about diving into this and everything that you're doing with the project, I mean, that just gets me more excited, gives me energy. And to discover this and connect with it, that's life-changing and that's Absolutely. everything. That's why I'm still doing it for that reason, to see people connect with that and get hyped on that. It can also go to another level of happiness. Hey everybody, welcome to a special episode of Hot Boxing. I am Evan Britton. And I'm Mike Tyson. Mike, we got a really special guest here, brother. Oh, this guy brother. is really special. This, this dude is, really is the man good. for many reasons. Pasquale, yeah. welcome, man. Thank How you, guys. You doing, Thanks for having me. I feel honored to be here. No, nah, we're happy to we're have you. We're honored, man. man. Pasquale is a very special individual, as we will see. Yes. We continue to go in the Absolutely. depth in this interview. Absolutely, man. So... Why don't we hop right in, brother? Why don't you tell us who you are and what you do? Well, I'm just a, I'm a regular dude that just no, had a you're love. Not. Come on, you're <laughs> not a regular dude. I appreciate that, especially coming from a le- you know a legend right here. Absolutely. It's a real honor to be here. Um, but it's I produce um, events mainly, but we do we have a label, we do fashion, we do all kinds of different things, but. It's all based on a community that is all about positivity, and I'm just the gatekeeper, really. Facilitator. Facilitator. You know, I, I build these shows like I, I'd want them to be for myself as an attendee and as a fan of the culture. And I um, started off doing 300 people at my first event, and now we're doing events with, we're doing almost 3 million tickets a year and some events on just one weekend will do 450,000 people and it's really just blossomed into this even larger community that I just um, has changed my life and has been there for a lot of people that you know t- life can have its challenges people come from all different backgrounds uh, I get messages on a daily about uh, these events save their lives they didn't commit suicide because of these of the, this community um, it makes them happy. They've met their, they have kids. They met their partner at these events. They, um, they're waiting for the next one to, to come their way so that they can, um, connect with people again. I mean, it's just, it's the most beautiful thing that I, I, I feel blessed every day to be able to work on, on these events and be part of this community. And, uh, it's just been real positive for, for people. And there's, there needs to be more of that in the world. So that's why, um, I love it so much. No doubt about it. Tell us what these events are specifically for our listeners who don't know. So they're they're not like your regular concerts uh, because of the community that's behind it. Because there's um, it's 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 about music, but it's also about connecting with one another and being your best self. Um, essentially, they're also Logistically, on the logistics side, they're pop-up theme parks. We build cities, temporary cities, for for the for the weekend. Wow! And um, our Vegas event, I mean, we have thousands of people, thousands of people working on the sh- on that show and building that show to get ready for 160,000 people to come through the gates. And we have 30,000 people camping. We have theatrics. We have amazing artists on the stages. We have art installations separate than the stages that also look like art installations. We focus on art in all its forms, whether it's music, theatrics, installations, sculptures. Uh, you mentioned, you know, uh, Macy, Macy balloons. You know, we, we, we try to go off on, try to touch every sense and bring everyone together and it brings people into the present moment when you wow people on that level and that's what our goal is because that's how it it's easier to connect people when you have them in the present moment and they're not thinking about tomorrow or or whatever it is yeah Yeah. Yeah. so it's it's um it's a great community that's amazing man and this is the nocturnal wonderland well nocturnal is one event that i Produce that my What company. are the names of the all the events you produce? Oh, there are quite a few. How many? Well, please tell them. I mean, there's there's a there's a there's a bunch. I'll really? spit some some yeah. off to what you. What are there's, your what are your biggest? 
The biggest ones, EDC, okay, uh, would be the biggest. And EDC doesn't just happen in one place. We do it all over the world. EDC is electric dance Daisy. music. Uh, electric Daisy Carnival. Carnival. I think dance. Yeah. EDC. That's beautiful. People dress up. There's, I mean, everything you can imagine. It's a literal wonderland. No, no, no. More than that, it's more like a spiritual retreat. Uh-huh. That's yeah. how I perceived it. Yeah. I that's it. the first thing I I, 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 I love you. I've, I've, known that's just the, I've known people that have gone, and that's the yeah. experience. That I, I'm one day I'm looking at that. I don't even know why I'm looking at it. I don't even know why it's on. <laughs> I'm looking at this. And, and, and listen, and I don't know, and I'm saying maybe it's my ego, you know? What do you mean? I gotta check my ego sometimes. I look at my ego and I looked at all this and I'm watching the people and I said, This is how my mind works. This is how my. I said, Wow, this is an army. I would like to lead this army. How do I get involved in this business? You know what I mean? I said, This is power. You know what I mean? It was more than just people dancing, it was power. It was like I was telling them, it was like it it was a political statement. Yeah. It's power from every perspective that you know of. You know, people from all parts of the world that's so disenfranchised, for one time in their life they become franchised, and they never want to disenf- disenfranchise again. Now imagine that, you could have the whole world doing it. How do you have the whole world doing that at the same time? How do we do that? And have it filmed, have the whole world at the same time, boom, do that. What's beautiful is I've been doing this my whole life since I was a teenager. Wow. Starting off on the dance floor, just being part, part of this small community mm. when it was very underground. For, for you to get that, I mean, I, I try to be a little bit conservative because I, I think people think I'm a little, you know, when Out I dr- talk about the no, no, spiritual listen, side that's of this, what, but for well, you I to say, get I had it. To, I had to say without using, a, using somebody, what, this egotistical motherfucker, no, without coming across that way, you know what I mean? But imagine everybody doing this at one time, no matter what time it is over the world, you know, different times of the world, one time, and it's filmed all over the world, and it's on some show, and it's all over the world, you can't stop it. It's forced in your face. I just love that. I totally vibe with that. I remember growing up, probably in high school and college for the most part, and during my time in the NFL, watching YouTube, of these incredible music festivals, the DJs, this music, the energy of the people, and being super inspired by that myself. So I totally, it totally resonates with me. And being, there's nothing like being there in person. Yeah. It's hard to describe. It's hard to, the fact that you've picked it up by, because you haven't been going in, in it deep, right? You've watched a lot of video. You've, you, you feel it. Naturally, you feel it. When you're there, it is unbelievable. And even people that say, okay, I understand it, when they go and they actually feel the energy of the people and talk to the people, it's, it's a whole nother level. I mean, it, does ch- it changes you to connect with a part of yourself that you, that, that, that you, don't, you, you can't usually connect with by just seeing something or being told something. I mean, it's really... It really is special. And people, you know, there's so many, people are searching to be a part of something. They wanna feel comfortable in their own skin. They wanna be able to dance without feeling like they're being judged. They wanna just let loose. And this is an environment that allows you to be able to just go off. You don't have to be hard. You don't have to be, you know, worry about being any, any way, right? And it's just, in LA, especially in the early 90s when, I, when you know in 1990-91 when I first discovered it and it was cr- it was crazy in LA those years like 80 88 89 91 it was nuts i mean it was you know i was in what Venice. was nuts like the electric music scene no i'm saying the city was nuts oh, oh. you know it was just a, it was crazy really people were down, hard right? there was really fighting in yeah. the streets, there was gangs, there was, I mean, if you were a young kid growing up in LA and you weren't protected by, if you know, you were in an area where, where your parents protected you or right. you weren't exposed to it, but there was a lot of people that, it was crazy. I mean, yeah. gangster rap was huge. Yeah. People were, you had a lot of wannabe gangsters, you had real gangsters, you had, I mean, it was a crazy time in LA. This was before the LA riots, not, mm. that happened in 92. And even into 
But you could see some before the LA riots. You could see something bad was gonna happen. Absolutely. You had to know you had the energy in LA. You always had to watch it back. Worry about people shooting and you running into people that you have conflict with mm -hmm. that you never even met before. Yeah. I mean, I, I was know? jumped uh, two times. You know, for, as a kid hanging out. You know, at the parks, drinking forties. Everyone was trying to. You know, the, the influences yeah. to do the yeah. music, and it was just. It was a, a crazy time yeah. to discover this community and this culture at that time and not get you know, I walked through the door. I, I remember the moment and just feeling, I remember someone skipping by me. It was like a big like dude that could be hard if he wanted, but he was like skipping by me with like a daisy in his Kango. Like it was a, tr a trip to see that because usually people are sizing you up, you yeah. know, and like what are you about and kind of reserved and judging right, right. you know seeing yeah. what you're about yeah. um if not running up on you maybe even asking where you're from mm -hmm. depending on where you were at that time yeah and to be in this environment where there was just um this music that it was just un unbelievable you know, it was unbelievable. Love. this is what i think about when i hit when i'm when i'm thinking about the music's playing when I move, and I think about playing my affirmations about, you know, thank you, God, for my, my hands, thank you for my legs, thank you for my eyes, thank you for my wonderful life. And, you know, it's going over and people hearing that, it's yeah. repetition, repetition. Thank you for being able to love, being able to reason, being able to understand. Oh, it's just, oh, it had me go crazy. <laughs> yeah. He said, whoa, yeah. it was just too much love. It was yeah. just all that love in there, and I was on, it was on television. I was just fantasizing, being involved. When was that first time you had that experience, Mike? This must have been a week ago, huh? Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, yeah. A little longer, though. It could have been, because I've been watching. I've been, in here, yeah. I've been in this room, just watching. This room was different. I just watched it, sitting there on my couch, just watching it. Yeah. Yeah, Mike Think is, of, yeah. We're fascinated by it. Um, and that's... I wish that happened earlier than two weeks ago. That could happen a long time. For me, exactly. that but happened. I was too judgmental back then. I was too judgmental. I seen all when the was your crazy first looking white kids and shit. I thought that shit ain't no good. <laughs> then one day I was re re reading my thought, wow, holy shit, they don't even know what this is. And that's where I get that epiphany from. Yeah. It, uh, for me, it happened in 1991. Wow. Luckily, luckily I, I, you know, I feel like. So many people, so many more people's lives would have been changed if they discovered it that early on. And um, who were the big artists then? There wasn't. I mean, it the wasn't. big. They just the, underground the big, DJs. It was here in LA. I mean, the scene was so small, and at one point it was non-existent. That's why I started hmm. because it, it, it existed for a short period of time. There was a uh, they call it a rave task force that mm. went and shut down all the parties. They're all illegal at the time. So this first experience you had was at a rave? The word rave actually wasn't, I, it, they were all called undergrounds. It was before even they were calling them raves. Uh. And they, they kind of turned so into rave raves. So rave is kind of a sort of derogatory, like law enforcement term. Is that not, right? Not for me. No. Depends who you're talking okay. to. If, okay. if the if Fox News is covering it, it's, it's derogatory, most right. likely. Right. If you know, for me, it's 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 the history of of sure. the, the underground scene. It, it, you know, rave culture yeah. is a beautiful thing. Where sure. and and there's a great community behind it. Where it had a bad, you know, it had a bad image. That's why I always had a bad image of it. Yeah. it gave, you know, the public, uh, the the press gave it a real bad image. They did. Yeah. They hung on to the things that they could find that were right. negative, and right. that was what it was. What was it? It what would, it was all about yeah. versus. The success, you know, right, right. me me not getting jumped at a, and being at a party. Right. That's, what I noticed, broke that's out. what I noticed too. I noticed the love. That's yeah, really fucked love. my head up yeah. to the love. Yeah, yeah. The love. When it people was all just love. uninhibited and just let it all go. Yeah, you know, people feeling comfortable being in that you know in that environment in LA was a, it was a a place that you felt comfortable in your skin and mm -hmm. and felt good. Yeah, I wish I could that. administrate the toll there while people are experiencing that. Well, one day you can. Man. One day you can do that. Just keep that, keep that in the mind's eye, Mike, and just fucking blast it out into the universe, man. It's gonna happen. Imagine doing it for three days in a row. You're letting the music play. <laughs> three days. Just let it go, brother. So, that first experience in '91, did that 
really just inspire you say i got to do what i can to spread this this culture this message how did you start producing these events yourself how does somebody even do that so in in 91 there was a small scene and i was real happy being part of it and going and taking it all in i got inspired when it died hmm because it, I realized how important it was for my life. I just wanted to bring it back. And I wanted somewhere for me and my friends to have a good time and connect with others on that level. So that's, that's when I got inspired. It, mm. it crashed and, and burned and it was... When was that? That was in 92. Really? That it really, it, it died. Between the LA, a lot of these parties used to happen in South Central and downtown LA. And between the riots and the curfews that were going on for like a month or so. There was, wow. You had to be in by a certain hour. These events would go all night. And the parties prior to the LA riots getting shut down because they were illegal and there being this task force out there. Because they were usually in like an abandoned warehouse or building somewhere, right? Yeah, they were in fields, warehouses, fields, yeah. uh, dry lake beds, mm. wherever. Wherever where, there was space to fit a few thousand people. Wherever you can pull it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's when I got inspired. Was when when it died, and I was I I, I had a void in my life mm. being able to go to these events. I mean, it was. I really, I mean, I lived for it. My room had all the flyers on the walls. I had a Sir Win Vega base bins in my bedroom. When did you think I can make a living off of this? It's a good question. I actually never thought about that till decades later. Because wow. I was just about the goals of having an Keeping exist. Alive. And yeah. I knew that it made me happy and I knew it made others happy. And I just wanted it to be alive and 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 and, ha and be be available to to myself and the people that I loved, which I love people. Mm. <laughs> so I, you know, I wanted to spread the word. Mm. So I just and I wanted it to exist, and that's that's what wasn't happening for a while. So, um, yeah. So that's that's really really how I started. It started really small. I mean, three hundred people. And um, was your first event? My first event had three hundred people. How did you go about it? What did you you found a space? You printed flyers. What was your workflow? Yeah, I was at Kinko's, cutting up fly, you know, flyers, sticking them. To, uh, I was doing the flyer runs and making copies, and I was out there promoting. I was on Venice Beach trying to find people that that remembered the old days, which was only a year prior, but it felt like an eternity because yeah, it, it, it had died a year prior, and I was talking to people about what it was about and. Um, had 300 people show up on the corner of uh, Crenshaw and Slauson wow. was my first. That's dangerous, man. My first Fucking party. dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. That's Shit, that didn't, even, that didn't even sound right when you said that, right? Looking at him Crenshaw and what he gets to mention didn't even sound like yeah. they connected with one another, right? Looking at him and what he just said didn't that's even not, connect, yeah, right? That's not what I was expecting <laughs> the first thought to God be. God damn. It's, you know what's beautiful is it's a yoga studio now, yeah. the warehouse that I used. Wow. I went and met the, the woman that runs the spot, and we were doing a little uh, documentary on the history, and talk to the woman. Isn't it incredible what determination and will would go through and do? Yeah. You know what I mean? Even, you know, don't care even, risk death. Risk don't even care. Just a, a thought. Yeah. A thought of something. I remember all the, um, a lot of the people used to cru cruise Crenshaw right there and there's these little turn off spots and I'd be setting up the sound system and there was just like a row of Impalas just, <laughs> you know, with uh, hitting the, the hydraulics and, and we were getting ready for the, the rave party that was going on there that night. It was just, it was uh, two different cultures coming, you know, it was, it was great. Wow. It worked out perfect. The parties would go off. I used that spot a couple of times, so I got busted, but, mm. and then we started moving around around the city, all, wherever we could find to do these events. Did you have a, a DJ, uh, somebody to get the, to put on the music? Like, who was it? Did you do it? Yeah, so I... I hired DJs, local LA underground DJs that were mm. playing the parties when the party when the events were still happening. 
And there were still some record vinyl shops on Melrose, and mm. I would go in there and I would talk to the DJs. The DJs used to be able, used to work at the record stores uh. that played the party, so you could hear a track that was played at, at an event, and then go into a record store and talk to the and be, what was that song yeah. you know, like this, and yeah. you try to uh, mimic. Uh, That's make the, the good old the days. Song. Yeah, so it was it was a real small scene and. And uh, the dream was to to grow it on the level that it's it's grown to, and I love that. You, that's so. I think that's so key that you weren't even thinking about making money. You were just thinking about how do I spread this love and happiness to as many people as I can. If I, if I did, if there was spreadsheets in front of me, and I did, it, if I if the goal was to make money, I would have. I could. I wouldn't have moved forward. Yeah. Because it was. There was no money in it. I was broke for many, many years. <clears throat> Top ramen, apartment with rent control, luckily, just barely, you know, getting, being able to pull it off. But it, I mean, when you don't even see that, I mean, I was the happiest, I was as happy as I, I am now then. N- none of that mattered. Imagine, imagine 200,000 people behind you talking about, we want rent control. But I say I, I say that it's not like I'm not saying I, I wasn't struggling, right? Because right. I was happy, right? And it was the best. The be, I mean, it was exciting, Makes and I was in love with everything. What I was you doing. were doing, yeah, yeah. So that's so important. It was easy, yeah. So important for in life, you know. I think that's like you were saying. It's that's the beauty of these, of the festivals and these carnivals, is that you know people in today's age get so bogged down with the mundane details of surviving, having a job that pays you money so that you can eat and after live. After you pay your bills. After you pay your bills, you know, and trying to figure out how they're going to be successful or who they are in the world. And being in an environment with, with music and the sensations that you provide and create you know, it reminds people of what really matters and who they are. And, you know, it taps them back into the spirit of themselves, you know, which we're so just, we're so distracted from in this time. Yeah. Um, and I think that's amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm so hyped that you give me energy because so, someone like yourself, so successful, a legend, and I mean, boxing, you, you don't think of many names Dude. in boxing. What's oh yeah hell yeah. Look at that. We're connected. Bro. What do you got, Shungite and Jet? Is that what you have? Do you know? This, was, this is actually given to me from. This was given to me. You'll you'll go to these events and you'll receive gifts. It's a am, it's amazing. Of course they were, the man. Culture. But uh, you know, for you to Cosmic. so I your energy it gets me more excited about to work harder and do more. For people that. Um, Find, see the positivity in this and it can, it can change our lives and it you know it makes them hearing you be excited about diving into this and everything that you're doing with the project I mean that just gets me more excited it gives me energy because there's people that are again they're they're angry they're 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 depressed they're so many different right, things going yeah. on and to discover this and connect with it that's life changing and that's Absolutely. everything that's why Still today, there's, you know, the business is successful, but I'm still doing it for that reason, to see people connect with that and get hyped on that. It can also go to another level of happiness. Absolutely, yeah. It can go to another level of it. Mm. Yeah. So let's talk about what we're doing together. What are you and Mike partnering on here? Explain it, please. To fucking bring to the world, man. How are we going to have... A worldwide fucking electronic music festival. So, as I mentioned before, we build c- cities for the weekend. Yeah. Some some shows, there's a show that we do that costs $50, $60 million to build for the weekend. And then what do we do? We tear it down wow. after building it. And people experience I'm it for three days. I'm going to start for memory. Yeah, you got I'll to. Start taking though. pieces and finish them. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the dreams has been, rather than just building a city and then tearing it down, a permanent destination mm. where you can host 
amazing events. And just me and Mike haven't known each other very long. We just recently met, and yeah. it was through. He's already done a he's done a festival, kind festival. Yep. He's building an oasis in the middle of the desert. Yep. Lazy river, uh, different levels of accommodations, yep. grass fields, uh, wave pools. I mean, he yes. and Chateau then there can't glamping stuff. Glamping, beautiful. And then there's me. I just told you my story, yeah. right? Yeah. So that. It's a perfect synergy. Exactly. So yes. Instantly, we are. We started, you know, dreaming up ideas and and connecting and talking and and uh, it's just it's it's we're exploring a lot of different things, endless amount of things, and I'm just really excited about what he's working on, and it ties into what I do for what I've devoted my life to. Yeah. So. Um, that's a little, a little bit, so a little bit. What is it like to find some um, property to do these shows? Is it miserable? So, it's, that's one of the hardest things. I have spent many, uh, I mean, decades trying to find venues to be able to produce these events, and it's, it's either the roads can't handle it, the local government is mm. thinks we're bringing Woodstock, they, they don't have a great image of mass gatherings. Uh huh. So they're a little afraid of it. Things have changed in recent years, and we've crossed over. The music has really gotten more popular. So people now, it's it's great. I'll be talking to someone at uh, an off uh, an officer or a fire marshal, and they'll say, "I used, to, you know, I go to these parties, or I used to go to these parties, or hey, can I meet this artist?" Like that, things have changed. It's yeah, matured, yeah. but it's still difficult on the logistic side to find a place that can house host. This, this many people. How many people usually? I mean, we're doing events. I mean, we do hundreds of events throughout the year. And we have, you know... The uh, biggest event that you do... 450, 60,000 people. The biggest in history, people. I think, is 600,000. 460,000 people? At one time, 160,000 a day. Oh, wow. So, a lot. Still a lot. Still and a then lot. Our, our smaller festivals do 50,000, mm. 60,000 people. That's a lot of people. In, in, in Mexico City, we do 120. Wow. In Las Vegas, we do 160. Mm. In Orlando, we do 90,000 a day. Mm. Um, and, you know, on Halloween, we do 60,000. There's a lot of different events. And you asked earlier about the brands. We, don't, we didn't get past EDC. But I know, have, I know. We have Nocturnal. We have EDC. We have Escape. We, we have a lot of different events, all different sizes. We've talked about Mike's property. He has, uh, you know, four, five hundred, four hundred twenty acres. Yep. We have put around five, seven hundred more. We get a lot of like, acres. Yeah, he can, we get a lot of get room. More if he wants more, <laughs> yeah. right next door. So um, that that can accommodate a hundred thousand plus people. Wow, yeah. amazing. What? I had the Jags by two last week. I need my goddamn money, dudes. That sounds like your problem, man. I don't care. Go rob a bank. Can I put some money down and win like a man? What's the matter with you? Yeah, man, huh? why would you? I wouldn't even listen to that motherfucker, man. Go online right now. Put my bookie online. Fuck it. Yeah, tell him. Fuck, fuck it. him. I'm going to use my bookie online. You don't got to take that bullshit from them. Hell no. That's right. My bookie online. You play, you win, they pay. That's what I'm talking about. Done. All day, every day. Let's do it. My bookie online. Boom. <laughs> MyBookie's got the fastest payouts and better lines than any other sports book. Join now and MyBookie will double your first deposit. Just use promo code HOTBOXIN to activate the offer. That's promo code HOTBOXIN and MyBookie will double your first deposit. Visit MyBookie.ag today. So are you thinking to bring one of your current festivals there or are you thinking of creating a brand new one specifically partnered I'll, I'll with mike take, i'll take anything he offers yeah we're exploring we're exploring everything anything yeah that's awesome well here is here's a little shot of the property this is the t ranch this map here is 490 acres on either side of the tent out in desert hot springs and palm springs we had the Kind Music Festival out there. Beautiful. The mountains are right behind it. 
It's yeah, going to be an amazing a, backdrop. Yeah, it's going to be incredible to have to build one of your cities out there, dude. Um, that's Antigua. This? That's our land in Antigua, I think. This is our land in that's Antigua. A, that's another property. This is another that property Mike's connected to that we're exploring something different at. Something different. What would yeah. that be? Well, we're at the. There's been a lot of different ideas, but don't want to. Don't want to. Don't want to. Rock the boat. Yeah, don't want to say what it is. Yeah, we we have to. All right, that's fair. That's fair. Let's see. Beautiful beautiful. property. Look. I mean, it doesn't matter what it's called if you're right there, right? I mean, it's it's there's a sound system and it, and you're able to be out there with amazing people and. Yeah, with the turquoise water there. Yeah, that's. One of the best trips I ever took was in Anguilla. Let's see what else we got. I mean, look at these properties, dude. You could build. I mean. That's, that's what we're going to do. That's what we not what we could. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Let's see. Okay. Let's Here's our too. glamping. Yeah, look at us. <laughs> glamping out at the ranch. That's the inspiration that's photos for... Or actually, those are 3D renders. You, you guys look did those at renders, those. Mike? Huh? You guys did those renders? Yeah, yes, we so, did. Yeah. So, I guess on the left is some inspiration photos and then some renders of what they actually want to build. Yeah. And um, if this, these kind of accommodations were at, were at a festival, I mean, it would be an amazing experience. And that's what we're all about is creating the best experiences we can. You have this and you know, on the outside you have security guard out there from the way you get into your your private space. It's beautiful, man. There's Rob and Jimmy. We have a festival called electric forest that is in the woods of michigan and we have cabins like that and actually the community is so amazing people there is no security like that people just respect one another they don't even go into each other's spaces you have these camp out festivals where some people are glamping some people are just straight up camping that's dope and do you do that at a lot of your events a handful i want to do more camping i love camping because when you have and I just added camping to our largest festival, EDC in Vegas. Yeah, I was just about to ask you about, because on your nocturnal wonderland, it says art, camping, and music. This is my first festival that I ever produced as a teenager, and I'm still wow. doing it today. It's the longest running festival that I'm, that I'm aware of Wow. in, dan- in the dance music world in, a, in America. So it's been, uh, it's been quite a ro- ride with this one. It's, it's amazing. But yeah, this is going to happen at a venue called Glen Helen. There's camping. It's a black light themed festival that really, really comes alive when the sun sets and yeah, all these theatrical performers come out. I love out. this stuff right here. This yeah. yeah it's people on stilts and shit. I love the people. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you got to make more like a Mardi Gras and all that shit. That's, oh. Yeah, man. Have big um, floats and shit. People on their floats. Art cars. Uh, Make it like comedy. Theatrics, art yeah. installations. But really, you know what makes it, these events? Oh, that's beautiful. Where's Glen Helen? Glen Helen is in San Bernardino, California. Oh, okay. It's in the hills. Okay. And there's um, a lot of uh, grass, grass at this. It's a park, essentially. And there's a water slide park attached to it that oh, we amazing. open up. So amazing. That's, that's a lot of fun. How about New York? Do they give you any shit about this in New York? In New York, and New York can be difficult. You know, we we've done festivals, we've done EDC, and we did fifty thousand, a hundred thousand people over two days for EDC in New York. Yeah. I ended up doing Orlando because there was grass there. I the venues are tough to find on the on, in New York. We were producing it in a parking lot of a stadium, and that's why I decided to not continue there because I wanted to find a better spot, and I, I'm still on the search. Because it's a little the, tough doing. What about cr- Prospect Park and Central oh, Park? Prospect and stuff Park, like that. dude. Yeah. I mean, that would be that would be real. That would be it. amazing. Yeah, but you got to get the. Um, you got to get go through the permit Brooklyn. process. Brooklyn, the permit yeah. is a bitch out right here. It is. I it can't be. In New York. What's that? What's that? Um, what do they call the people? Not the uh, the people behind them. What's the people? Parks and Rec. No, the people that are behind all the the napkins and all that shit. The. the Union people. Oh, oh the union. Yeah. You know what? You know your shit. Because yes, in New York, on the East Coast <laughs> Union, York it's still, still gangster. East Coast Ooh. unions. It's, 
You don't. You're, they they want, ain't nice. They don't talk nice either. They don't let you, and they they work at their own pace, and you're yep. paying them per hour, and they do not uh, let you touch anything. Mm. If you want to move the napkin <laughs> to the yeah. left, no, I'm serious. They want. Yeah. They they they, they <laughs> don't want you touching a thing. They need to do it, and they're gonna do it when they're ready. They're ready. So we we try to get out there and Unless push for things. Buddies. Unless they're your buddy, they do the buddy system down there. Yeah. So it was a very that down. was another reason I'm glad you mentioned that because not only did we all, we we use a parking lot and try to transform it into like a magical magical venue for the weekend which took a lot when you're putting that much into something and then you're dealing with the union you know it, it gets really pricey so costly that even at sellout your it's tough to make sense mm. so Fuck, man. this is the this is the look lineup. at this lineup. Alan Walker. Sex Machine. Bass Rush Experience. <laughs> We've got Black Tiger Sex Machine. Bleep Bloop. Camel Fat. Camel Champagne flat. Drip. B2B. Zeke Beats. Back to back. That, they're going to go back to back on the, ta- on the turntables. Ooh. Chris Lorenzo. Dead Beats. DJ Snake. Camel Fat. I mean, fat. the list goes I'm on. Ganja fat. White Knight. Gentleman's Club. Golden Features, Insomniac Records. So Insomniac, that's another one of your events? So Insomniac is the company that produces all the events. Okay, cool. And we have a, our Insomniac Records is our label. We, I'm excited to say we just had our first uh, Grammy nomination with uh, Fisher's track that we've been, uh, that, that was exciting for us. But yeah, we, Insomniac is the company that produces the events. It's the I company. gotcha. And it's it's the name of the ev- that's what the name of the events were when I first started. Mm. So when I did the uh, Crenshaw and Slauson party, yeah. it was called Insomniac Fridays. And I every weekend on a Friday, I would do a different warehouse. How long were you doing that? I did that for a year. For that's a year, amazing. every Friday there was a different party that you had to find out where it was. And then I had my one year anniversary, and I decided, and that's when I did Nocturnal, which was my first festival. Wow. So it, it's Insomnia Presents Nocturnal Wonderland. Amazing, man. Why do they have to work there when they have their own property? Yeah, I know. Where the people can I know. know they're going to be every year, every day, every time of the year. This is where they're going to be. They don't, they don't have to say, well, where's it going to be? Oh, that's too far. Or that's too expensive. They know. They can plan. They can anticipate it. And they have no problem being there. It makes sense to me, buddy. You don't have to fuck with the unions. <laughs> you know? Well, especially if the infrastructure is built. Right. You know, we want to change the event up, the different events up, so it's a different experience for people that come. But the infrastructure you can have ready to go, so you're not yeah. rebuilding it every time. So it's, it's, it's great. You know, very, very exciting thing to explore. And man, how mo- much money you fuck up with tearing it down all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Then That's... you can focus on the, the I mean, fun you... stuff. Yeah. You know, the the nuts and bolts of it aren't 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 as fun as. Yeah. The changing up the, the the concept of the event, making sure that the experience is good, yeah. and having the um, the foundation on the level that that Mike's talking about building is is uh, that's that's exciting for the whole culture and for the scene. It's so awesome, man. Well, I imagine being in Prague. You ever did Prague yet? Prague. You did Prague yet? I haven't done Prague. You ever did Russia yet? Haven't done Russia, but we talked about that at dinner. Russia, fuck. I wonder what um, Israel would be like. Israel? Israel goes off. Be dope. Israel's yeah. great. Yeah, we, we're, we're looking around in Israel. Yeah, Jerusalem. Yeah. Awesome, huh? That's dope, dude. It's we're, spreading all over the world. It's, a, it's beautiful. You know, we, we have grown so much in the past two years. Mm. And uh, we're just getting started. We just had our 25-year anniversary, and I feel like it's year one for us. Wow. That's exciting. Yeah. Imagine China. China. Oh. China. China. How about the, the riots that are going on there, man? People well, are waking that's up that's in Hong China. Kong, right? Yeah. In Hong Kong. Well, um, it's pretty interesting. What do you mean by waking up? Are you talking about some kind of revolt, so to speak? Yeah. Yeah. I think that, you know, living under that type of communism, communist regime, where there's censorship, there's all sorts of 
It only comes Manipulation. when it, when it um, suits them, you know, because the way they handle money now in China and sell things on the streets, it's not like vendors now in China, that is very not common. It's capitalist. Super capitalist. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Personal own, but the, the government works like this. You could have a, you could have a, you could become a multi billionaire there, right? But it's just a certain amount of money you could leave the country with. Interesting. No, very interesting. Interesting. So you could be a billionaire. But you probably could only take three hundred thousand dollars out if you're going to Vegas or something. Probably wow. not. You know why you gotta take that much money too? Probably you have to explain it as well. I'm not sure, but most likely that's what it was like. Cause I remember I was in Finland when it was a communist country, and people had visited Finland from Russia. And I remember it was like twenty people in a line, grown adults, and one guy had a gun. And he was like guarding and watching them. Mm. Yeah. I said, wow, this is crazy. And the other guys, the other guys that that Mao beat, Kao Yang Chak, those guys, they went. Well, I don't know. They didn't go to uh, Singapore, but they went somewhere else. And they started. They went to the dope business. Mm. Opium. And yeah, they went to opium business. The ones, the, the capitalists that lost to the communists in China, they went to the opium business. Well, you know, the oldest cannabis uh, plants they found or discovered were ten thousand years old from China. Really? The emperor would use it. Wow. Yeah. I never yeah. heard that. That's cool. Yeah. But who are we as, you know, I don't even know who we should talk about. We should, but I, what I say sometimes, who are we as people that we have to be high all of our life? That, well, we're you know, always if, if, seeking. If we, don't have, if we don't have our joint or we don't have a, whatever, it's cocaine or our liquor, life is not happy no more. Life is miserable. Why is that? Why are we built like that? Human beings, why are we built like that? It's no longer, it's over, the life is over once we don't have this no more. Well, there's not enough parties out there. There's not enough EDCs out there. <laughs> I That's agree. why we're pushing this. I Get agree. it out there, Pasquale. I agree. Hey, that, that was serious right there. I yeah. agree. Mm -hmm. No, really, I mean, I it's, agree. it makes people happy. For real. Absolutely, I get, man. I get direct messages about it every day <laughs> on a level of like, I'm not going to kill myself because I'm waiting for the next one. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, shit, man. Hold on. I Let's reason. think about yeah. how, what's it like living a, like a human being, thinking about yourself all day. That's what we do most of the time. We just think about ourselves or things that are surrounding ourselves, right? How do people live it? How do you get that fucking shit to shut up, you know? Be in the moment. Yep. That's it, man. So you, you, you zap them into being into the moment when they walk through those gates. For, for us, that's on, on our side. And there's other ways to do that yeah but that's what we you know we've do uh, d devoted our lives to doing and it's been very gratifying that's how you shut the ego down by making someone else happy yeah you know and make somebody happy just so you shut it down stop thinking about yourself and talking about yourself all the day yeah i mean we could go really deep on the why we want to get high but <laughs> because that's what we're always seeking, man. We're seeking connection with something greater than ourselves, something higher, something. We're seeking connection with God, and these chemicals that we put into our bodies help us achieve that, even if it's only for a moment. You know. You know. I'll, well, I'll please go ahead. Well, you know, you can have you can have those moments. Whether it's you know uh, sm smoking or can just being at one of these events, taking in the energy. Absolutely. But, but you you can learn from those moments and, and take it into your everyday life, and that's what I see happening a lot. Yeah, you know, I lit. I talk a lot about about. I keep going back to what we do in these events because this is what I live every day and what I'm um, you know only pretty much only thinking about. Aside from family, I'm thinking about these events in this community and. That's what I love seeing it changing people. I mean, really changing people's lives where they come, they get this feeling, they connect, and they leave a different person, and they they're they're nicer to themselves, to themselves, to, to the others, people. just on on a daily. And that's a transformation that that keeps me going. Um, and I f I feel that's what you're hyped. You know, you love that too. You know. Yeah, I'll say how, how do I do this shit at 53? So listen to this <laughs> shit. <laughs> Right. Well, your vibration is raised. What am I feeling this shit for? I'm feeling this. What the fuck am I doing listening to this shit like a young kid? This is new music. Like, wow, this is really what's something. 
It's beautiful, it's beautiful man. It beautiful. It's beautiful, dude. Yeah. It's awesome, man. It's your open. I, I see so much in it, you know. I can't yeah. wait till you go to your first EDC. Yeah, it's gonna be so it's awesome. It's gonna be awesome. It's Hope I don't awesome. cry and shit. Hey man, just oh, let it out. Yeah. Crying and shit. Let it out. <laughs> no, we cry be, all the time. Yeah, dude. it won't be long. Huh? Let the tears flow, baby. It's all good. Wait. Why did you though? Do you ever say myself, why did this happen to me? Why do I got the light? I mean, I pinch myself every day, and I'm grateful for it. I ask myself, you know what? I, I, I'm not that I'm asking myself. I, I think I'm thankful every day, mm-hmm. and I pinch myself every day. You know, the beautiful people that are around me, the beautiful things that I get to work on, the, the amazing people that come to these events. To be able to be part of it is something that um, makes me happy and and uh, makes me want to work harder. This is your purpose, man. I, you know? I love it. This is your purpose. It's all vibrations, you know. And yeah. the music is a direct representative of that, but... You know, when you go to a festival like one of yours, your vibration gets raised to a certain level. And then you leave there and your vibration is still high. So when you're around the people that you've been around, your relationship with them is shifted because their vibration hasn't changed and yours has. And as you go through life and your vibration continues to raise, you sift out all the people until you get to the top, you know. Wherever that is, you that's know, most probably people are repetitious. You, yeah, only yeah. very few people get the get the, um, the information of thought. You yeah. know, it doesn't seem that because it seems like the very a lot of successful people, but the yeah. percentage of people, very few people have thought, and it's just hard to believe that that's true. Yeah. Very few people do. Most people are repetition. Yeah, you're stuck. They go to work every day, do this every every yeah. day, same thing. Nobody go do. You know, I know I'm gonna come here every day, but I don't know if I'm gonna wake up every day. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And very few people get the idea, hey, where did that thought come from? Why don't I work on that thought and they're on that thought and next thing you know, they're this person. Yeah. You know, a life where we are who we think we are. Yeah. That's, we are that's our right. thoughts. We, you know what I mean? That's right. Even if we don't want to face ourselves, we are who we think we are. Yeah. And even if you if you don't want to face yourself, yeah. you're going to continue to yeah. dig you yourself are. into yeah. that persona. No doubt about it. Where were you born, man? Were you born Los in? Los Angeles. You were? I'm born and raised in LA. Wow. Skateboarder, you're skateboarder and all that stuff? Skateboarder, break dancer? I, yeah. I, I surfed, I skateboarded, I broke I broke dance on the boardwalk. I uh, was, uh, have you know, graffiti uh, artist. I was in graffiti crews. I wasn't as good as some of my friends, that, but the, but I was in graffiti crews. And um, yeah, I grew up, grew up here in LA. Awesome. Um, and then got into going to underground parties. Yeah, and a little bit of DJing in the early, early days when I first started, but then I decided to go the route of producing the events because there would have been no parties. What was it that brought you to that first, that very first one you went to? My just my friends. Um, Your friends DJ, invited you. Yeah, DJ AM. Hmm. Uh, DJ AM. DJ AM. Oh, wow. And a dude named Seth. He's in a band called Crazy Town. Those kids that I grew up with. Crazy Town. Yeah. I love Crazy Town. Yeah. And, come, uh, my lady, come, come, my lady. Yep. So yes. they, they brought me to my first underground party uh, in the early 90s. Wow. And I was just mind blown. Actually, we were all hanging out in a little... Westwood at the time was very different. We would hang out there. and What was, was it like then? It was I mean, it was all... Though. every Kids from everywhere would just congregate there on, the on a nightly basis. No, no. Well, college kids were there too, but it was more like a lot of taggers and uh. tag bangers and some gangsters and some. And what killed it all actually was a shooting and a murder there from. Uh, they had the movie uh, either Boys in the Hood or Colors mm. one weekend, and the whole city, like I think a college student got yeah. got got hurt in, in the in the crossfire of things. And it kind of killed Westwood from being this hangout, but it used to be a spot where uh, all the Troubled kids would, would, you know, all the, all the would come and hang, come out. And hang out. There was an arcade there because it was kind of a dope area. There was a lot of, yeah, yeah, a lot of fun shit going on. There was a lot of fights. That's where I had gotten jumped a couple of times. Oh the wow, park there, in Westwood jumped into, yeah, fuck. No, it's crazy. Westwood crazy. was hard back in the day. I mean, you had kids from everywhere yeah, yeah. coming there. You Makes know? sense. I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't. I'm not. It, it was, was a collection Crenshaw point for LA. It wasn't. Crenshaw yeah, yeah, Slauson. yeah. 
but it, there was a lot of stuff going there. People would come from everywhere to, to hang out in Westwood, meet girls, play arc, you know, hang out yeah, in the arcade, yeah. get in trouble, whatever it was. And then there was that big shooting there, and it kind of killed it for the opening of uh, one of those two movies. I forget wow. what it was. Crazy. Um, so that was. Some of got killed with John Attenberry. He got killed there. In wow. Westwood? His car was coming. Somebody was just shooting, and he shot his car. Oh, wow, yeah. Jesus. That might have been the same yeah. same situation. But, yeah, it was, it was Westwood. Westwood was pretty crazy. Man. Wow. Oh. Shit, man. I'll never, for, yeah, I'll never forget this crew called NBT. Holy shit. NBT. Well, anyways. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it was... Um, what that stand for? Um, nothing but trouble. Mm. Fuck. Mm-mm-mm. Fuck that. And we were, we were, um, Stay away from those guys. And we, we, we were, yeah, they came in and started jumping kids God from another it, crew dude. that were there. And, I mean, that was, that was just one, it, there was a lot of stuff that was, was going on yeah. there that was crazy. It was a it was very fun. tumultuous time. <laughs> Absolutely. But then w- those guys, I was at um, Seth's house and I remember we were wearing Dickies and Converse and if you were like. Some some of the guys were wearing Nike Cortezes and white T-shirts and starter jackets, Raiders or Kings, mm. baseball. You know, one day I don't know when this happened. I was at those guys' house and they were putting on giant overalls. And they were pinning <laughs> daisies to their overalls and they were wearing top hats with fur on it. I was like, I was still wearing my dickies, sagging my. I was, like, what is? What are you guys doing right now? Where are you taking me right now? So. That was going to an underground underground party. They we went down. to a map point, and then we went to a warehouse, and I was like, "What, what? is this?" And everyone was super cool. What's the reason to dress up for? What was that? What's the reason that they dress up like that for? Well, it was it was it was part of the just like um, just like. Rock and roll and yeah. and hip hop have a sw- certain swagger and style about them. Uh, dance music, rave music, rave culture. At that time, baggy overalls, Doc Martens, or shell toe Adidas with even fat laces. The, the inspiration from mm-hmm. hip hop culture. There was that in the rave culture uh, as well. So and you know walking in and feeling That's that energy. Awesome, no wonder they could wear you know. Daisies pinned to their overalls and furry hat, like it's all good here. Yeah, it's all good. Whatever you want, just be you. And yeah, people were. And then we brought, you know, we used to dance in the circles there. I used to love the music, and the music reminded me of the early what you heard on the Venice Boardwalk that was booming out of uh, the giant ghetto blasters that that people were holding on the boardwalk in the, the, in the mid-80s. People were doing that shit? Yeah, well, the it, it was the same man. music. Having that big fucking radio shit. Yeah, it was like craft, craft work and even like oh, yeah. Nucleus, that jam Daft Punk? song. And, oh, I mean, Daft Punk. What, what was that one song? It's the same, same I mean, yeah, yeah. that was like, break, you know, craft like work early for sure, hip-hop. Yeah. yeah. Sounded like, I mean, it was dance, it was dance yeah. music and it was um, walking into that first underground party and hearing that music and feeling that vibe. And then there was dance circles at the parties and people were break dancing to, te- to house and techno and up mm. doing, you know, house dancing and stuff. It was, it was everything that I want, I needed and yeah. wanted. It was better than getting, going at the, to the park and people starting getting dr- drunk and like, be like, Hey, let's start a new crew who let's, you know, and then people jumping each other into little crews and then like real gangsters coming and like sweating us. Like it was, it, you know, it was better than that. It was, yeah. I, I, as a kid, I felt like going to Venice beach, going to my first underground party. Mm. Cause Venice beach, you had people of all kinds coming together. You had the street performers, you had the, um, the artists, you had um, all, all the tourists that were there. You had the, the gangsters that were there. You had the break dancers. You had the surfers, the skaters. It was all kinds of people coming together. And Venice Boardwalk, majority of the time, there was some times where there was like some riots on the, on the boardwalk, but majority of the time, it was all love down there. It was a lot of artists and unique people yeah. coming together there. You had homeless people. You had weirdos, freaks, everything. Going to an underground party and going to rave, it was like the same. It was the same thing. So I felt very instantly, very comfortable there, 
and uh, the positive vibes was was just have positive energy. Have you been interviewed by um, a network, television, NBC, ABC, anything like that? I have. Yeah. Yeah. About rave, about the music. Yeah, yeah. I, I've I've gone to on some on press runs and beyond. I've been on uh, minutes, huh? CNBC and Fox and news. I've been on a lot of new like in a lot of news channels and. I flew to New York to go to be on CNB, CN, CNBC. Yeah, I don't watch the news really too much, but nothing good there. Nothing well, now good. you've been on Hot Boxing, brother. I mean, and this is amazing, man. Sitting, Thank sitting you, with buddy. you. Hey, dudes. Honest. Thank you so much, Thank man. You guys. Really, really excited for the future. Thank you. Cam, thank you. Same. For same thank you. You're the man. Mike, great episode. A lot of great things coming. Yeah, dude. God is great. God the future is, great. is bright. All right, everybody. Sorry. Thanks for checking Thanks. us out. Another great episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Evan Britton. I'm Mike Tyson. Pasqual Rotella. Do you want anybody to know anything about you? Want to say anything to the world? Uh, damn. <laughs> if you haven't been to a, a, a insomniac event or even any any dance music festival, and you think you know what it is, you got to check it out. It's probably nothing like that. Um, it's amazing. It's good for the soul. Come check us out. Insomniac.com. You can check out a lot of events there. And uh, yeah. Awesome. Appreciate it. Awesome. Appreciate being Thank here. Thank you very much. Thanks. Peace, everybody. All right. Thank you, dude. I didn't even smoke any weed.